I've beat up a lot of lower ranked trash talking opponents. I'm going to strangle this guy. This guy is a blanket. His guillotine really isn't that good. I felt it already. Maybe a white or blue belt level guillotine. But today I change things up as I go up against an elite purple belt who is also a skilled Muay Thai fighter. His only fault is that he thought he could survive my guillotines. Let's see if a higher belt rank can put me to the test or if I'll completely outwork him. Jumping into the round, the first obstacle I'm going to have to deal with is his height. It's hard to snap down anyone if they didn't grow up with a calcium deficiency like the guy in the black shirt. But a few goals I can give myself to beat this difference is to have my head on the inside and to pull my arms in for better connections. Or I guess the alternative is just to let him go for a lap drop, completely biff it, and now his height means nothing. Lately I've been working a lot of pressure passing and keeping my head tight to their chin, but because of his length I'm deciding to work around his legs and I take a big back step and I start trying to pass through back half. But it's extremely important I put all my weight into his armpit. I drive off of my feet to keep my weight on him because I don't want to get swept over from octopus guard. And by keeping my ribs over his face, he hates the pressure and eventually just gives me side control. I also notice because he's flat on his back, the world is my oyster and I can start fishing into a head and arm choke. Once I go underneath the neck and under the arm, I switch to the other side and it's a quick tap. While it's great I got a fast submission, now I have to do that same battle before of trying to get my head on the inside and pummel constantly. His height isn't going to make it easy, but I might as well let him do all the work for me. As I re-enter the space looking for the superior hand grip, he actually hits me with a quick arm trig, but falls right into a guillotine. Nice. And if I can stop every wrestler with this, you're damn right I can stop a purple belt with it. Now that's two subs for me, but I've got some real work to do. I've been working some new takedowns and I've been hitting this next one on everybody. It's a standard blast double, but the way I'm doing it puts me into a strong position where I can start camping immediately. I'm shoving my head into his chin and I have no threat of being submitted from any position. The first thing you need to do from here is start framing against me, which is exactly what he does. But I'm so high on my feet that it makes it a lot easier for me to go to my next attack. I start bringing my knee over his stomach line, so he pushes it, and then I switch knees I attack with so I can pass his guard with a knee cut. Then the mission is to make a miserable in side control. Anytime you can pass somebody's guard, you need to put the pressure on them so you can constantly work submissions. So I bring my knee over his belt line, drive my head into his skull again, and then I remind him I can always bring my butt over his head if I really want to. But he pushes against me because no one is going to comfortably sit there and I set him up for the super cross face by getting his arms stuck while locking my hands together. This is a position I'm quite familiar with and now I use it to inflict that same pain on other people. But only for a short period of time as I'd rather go for another head and arm choke. Unfortunately this was a mistake as I went to knee mount, he rolled away, then pushed me off and regarded and we reset in the middle. But to keep this in an entertaining round, I can't waste too much time passing and not getting anything accomplished. Always remember that if you need a new guard pass, try the guillotine pass that goes straight into the choke where you fall off to the side. It's crucial I pin that top leg down until I have enough control over the neck that I can switch off into mount and then I can finish the submission. Now I think it's important everybody in their game has their secret weapon they're going to unleash on unsuspecting victims at any one point in time. Let's get another glimpse of mine. As he shot in, I instantly locked up a chin strap guillotine, and I talk about this guillotine at length in my instructional because I've slain so many foes with it. If you're looking to do this to other people... It was dark. It was really dark. Then consider getting my instructional with cold guillotine for 10% off. Now back to my current victim, I wasn't lying when I was saying I was working some wrestling and pressure passing. As I come in to re-engage, I already have the shot in mind. I pull the neck down that goes straight in for a blast double, immediately bringing him down to the mat, and my head goes into his chin, just like before. And since hindsight is always 20-20, I hit the same knee cut pass I did just like before to get into side control. But I do give him a little bit of a blessing. Knowing I have a few submissions over him already, I go up to a knee and then I just kind of let off the pressure so he can re-guard and I can work the passing attack again. Now thanks to the gods blessing him with height instead of me, as he re-guards, the first thing he's going to look for is De La Hiva, which is pretty standard for someone of his length. But he makes a mistake because I go past his knee and he doesn't follow me with his foot, so I'm able to acquire a knee side on the opposite side, but I'm looking for a brand new submission this round. After noticing the camera wasn't anywhere near me, I decide to turn him around for just a few style points, then I get him with the Darce Choke. Now before you watch any more of the video, if you're looking for great multivitamins, supplements, or protein, go to Transparent Labs with promo code TYLER. You can get great protein like this that's grass-fed, 
best ingredients and for an affordable price. It makes me stronger on the mats and it'll make you stronger as well. So far this match has been all me, but you have to understand these are 9 minute rounds. I'm currently juiced up on every legal supplement known to man, so tossing him around the mat like I just did is easy <laughs> stuff for me. I'm also helping my teammates prepare for ADCC trials, so juice mode is in full effect. But other than talking about how I want to eventually look like Gordon Ryan, I try and add some action around by going for some more wrestling until he kicks back, and he's actually going to go for his own attack. Unfortunately, it's a fireman's carry. I'm not going to pretend the fireman's carry can't work because it's clearly been done to me, but on average, I'd say this is one of the worst takedowns you can do in jiu-jitsu. You willingly put yourself in a crucifix and chokes are allowed in this sport, so it just doesn't work nearly as well as it does in wrestling. But what always seems to work for me is the front headlock. I used it to toss him to the mat instead of just suffocating him with another guillotine and now I'm going to work to try and pass the guard and probably lock out some different strangle on him. One guard passing technique I have for you is to always try and cross the feet. It won't guarantee that you get a guard pass, but you're definitely creating openings. For my opening, I decided to scoop up his head and if you don't know what I'm going to do from here, I mean, come on bro. I recently heard from another black belt that Jiu Jitsu gets pretty repetitive for him because he knows exactly what's going to happen. And I can definitely relate to that. It seems like the guillotine openings are always there. No matter how you set them up, there's always going to be an opening to attack somebody's neck. So I'm preaching the gospel when I say this, but if you want to have more fun in Jiu Jitsu, wrestling seems to be the answer for me. There's just something about constantly working your opponent and even if you can't get every takedown, you're going to make them want to quit and file a domestic violence case against you. One of my favorite athletes to watch is Dorian because he's completely smashing people with his wrestling. Even though this round was heavily in my favor, I had a lot of fun with it because of the wrestling and be able to transition between passes and attacks. Comment below if you want to see more wrestling.